If you don't have the means to move anywhere near the speed of light and you want to send people to the stars, how can you do it? One way would be in a generation ship, an immense, relatively slow-moving spacecraft also known as an interstellar arc, aboard which many generations would live and die on a voyage across the light years. The generation ship has been offered as an alternative to spacecraft that travel at much higher speeds, carrying conventional sized crews. The idea of a vessel carrying a civilization from a dying solar system toward another star for a new beginning was envisioned in 1918 by the rocket pioneer Robert Goddard, but perhaps concerned about professional criticism, he placed his manuscript in a sealed envelope and it didn't appear in print for over half a century. Konstantin Salkovsky and J.D. Bernal wrote about artificial planets and self-contained worlds in the 1920s, as did Olaf Stapledon in his visionary novels. By the 1940s, the generation ship concept had been fully expanded by science fiction writers in the publications of Hugo Gernsback and others. One of the earliest examples of a true generation ship in fiction appears in Don Wilcox's The Voyage That Lasted 600 Years, published in 1940. Robert Heinlein in Orphans of the Sky, 1958, first published in 1941 as a serial in two parts, Universe and Common Sense, raised the possibility that the crew of such a vessel might eventually forget they were aboard a ship and believe instead that they were the inhabitants of a small world, a theme taken up in one of the original Star Trek episodes, For the World is Hollow and I've Touched the Sky. Another generation ship appears in the Star Trek Voyager episode, The Disease. In 1952, the Welsh physicist and member of the British Interplanetary Society, Leslie Shepard, examined the idea of the generation ship in more technical detail. He described a nuclear-propelled million-ton interstellar vessel shaped as an oblate spheroid, which he envisioned as a kind of Noah's Ark. Such a ship would be a microcosm of human civilization with a substantial and highly varied population, extensive educational, recreational and medical facilities, food production areas, research laboratories and so forth, effectively a miniature nomadic planet. He wrote, it is obvious that a vehicle carrying a colony of men to a new system should be a veritable Noah's Ark. Many other creatures besides man might be needed to colonize the other world. Similarly, a wide range of flora would need to be carried. A very careful control of population would be required, particularly in view of the large number of generations involved. This would apply alike to humankind and all creatures transported. Life would go on in the vehicle in a closed cycle. It would be a completely self-contained world. In 2002, the American Association for the Advancement of Science held a session on interstellar travel where the anthropologist John Moore estimated that a population of 150 to 180 was just big enough to allow normal reproduction for 60 to 80 generations. There's perhaps a strange attraction in the idea of the generation ship, though whether anyone would willingly volunteer to exile themselves to such an environment knowing that they'd die some fraction of the way to the ultimate goal is hard to say. Perhaps there'd be less of a psychological problem for subsequent generations who were born aboard the ship and therefore never knew what life was like on the surface of a planet under open skies. Then again, how difficult would it be for those who finally reached journey's end to step outside the confines of their artificial world? Like many other old ideas in space travel, including Lucian's water spout and Wells' Cavorite, the generation ship now seems quaint and romantic. Almost certainly, interstellar travel will never be accomplished by this means, though it's still possible that the related concept of the space colony will come to fruition.